Today, I'll be giving commentary on Neville Goddard's Fundamentals, which includes five lessons. And these five lessons include the essence of all that Neville taught. If you wanted to simply understand Neville, understand these lessons, these fundamentals. And while I share my commentary, please enjoy the sights of a lovely stone museum I found in the Japanese countryside. From Lesson 1, Consciousness is the Only Reality. Neville gives a simple formula for changing the future, as discovered by the ancient teachers and also given to us in the Bible. The first step in changing the future is desire. That is, define your objective. Know definitely what you want. Second, construct an event which you believe you would encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. An event which implies fulfillment of your desire. Something which will have the action of self-predominant. The third step is to immobilize the physical body and induce a state akin to sleep. Then mentally, feel yourself right into the proposed action. Imagine all the while that you are actually performing the action here and now. You must participate in the imaginary action, not merely stand back and look on, but feel that you are actually performing the action so that the imaginary sensation is real to you. And Neville gives the example of someone who wants a promotion at work, so he would imagine people congratulating him, and he would bring the power of touch. He would imagine a friend there, and putting his hand in his friend's hand, and whatever it is you feel, and then you would hear an imaginary conversation, just what you would hear if you were promoted. But Neville highlights the difference between success and failure is to really feel yourself in the midst of the situation as though it were real. And you do this all the time when you daydream or have a fantasy and forget the world all around you. So you can do it. It's just a matter of practice to do it intentionally. Doing it now knowing this is how you create your own reality. Now another point that Neville highlights, and that is to condense the imaginary act. For instance, if you wanted a promotion at work, you might imagine a friend patting you on the back and telling you, hey, congrats, you deserve that promotion. And to replay that scene until you lose yourself in it and you feel the tones of reality. For some, it may only take one time. For others, it may take a handful of times. And for even some, it is something you may have to practice over a little bit more time. And Neville found the greatest success with a condensed action like this. Because often, when you try to overthink it, your mind can think of a zillion different things and you lose the potency. So just ask yourself, if I got what I wanted, what's a scene I would most likely encounter? What's the home run scene? They would take it home and make you feel the total reality. And Neville also discussed, if you find your mind wandering, it's okay. Just bring it back. Bring it back to that condensed action. And as Neville taught, these things are best done when the mind is in a sleepy state. That is when it is easiest to control the train of thoughts, the imagination. For many, this may be before bedtime, when you're a little bit drowsy, but not too sleepy to fall asleep right away. Others may feel a better time as when they wake, and for some, it may be after a good lunch, when they can sit back in a chair, kick back, and relax. And after you have applied this technique of prayer, you do not need to lift a finger or do anything else, but of course, if you feel intuitively inspired, or follow your joy, and a sign to know that you did it right, as you get so lost in this beautiful, imaginary contemplation, you forget the world around you, and when you open your eyes, you're shocked for a moment, because what you experienced in your mind was so real. And Neville warns, do not discuss it. Do not look to someone for encouragement, because a thing might not come. It has come. Go about your father's business, doing everything normally, and let these things happen in your world. And I think that's one thing that people have trouble with, just letting things happen, just accepting things that your wish is fulfilled. And may this be a reminder for you. Let it be easy. Let it happen and come to you. Moving on to Lesson 2, Assumptions Harden into Facts. Neville really focuses in this lesson of using that time right before you go to sleep, especially when you can catch yourself where you're sleepy, but not too sleepy to fall right to sleep. With practice, you can make this a habit. In a sense, this is your wishing stone, your magical lamp, to make all your wishes and dreams come true, the precious moment right before you go to bed. Neville says, 
I can tell you dozens of personal experiences where it seemed impossible to go elsewhere, but by placing myself elsewhere mentally as I was about to go to sleep, circumstances changed quickly, which compelled me to make the journey. I have done it across water by placing myself at night on my bed as though I slept where I wanted to be. As the days unfolded, things began to mold themselves in harmony with that assumption, and all things that must happen to compel my journey did happen. And I, in spite of myself, must make ready to go towards that place which I assumed I was in where I approached the deep of sleep. And Neville gives a warning here not to treat it lightly, for it is one of the most powerful times to create reality. So don't take your upsets into sleep. Instead, take their revision. Take the mood of a more happier stance to sleep. What would it feel like if you were what you wanted to be? What would it feel like if you had what you wanted? Those are the moods you take into sleep each and every night, until that gels into your one and only reality, and then you'll happily sleep in gratitude, or even more gracefully, simply peace and joy. So the biggest highlight of this lesson is control your moods as you go to sleep. Now Neville gives a couple final pointers, and one of the pointers is to do this with the least effort. It must come naturally. If you want to know how to do it naturally, just catch yourself when you find yourself daydreaming. With practice, you'll be able to do it intentionally, naturally. For Neville found this is the greatest way to efficient success. And Neville's second pointer is to become the policeman of your thoughts. Become more present and aware of the thoughts that pass through your mind and refuse to enter anything unlovely that tears you down. As you do this and it gets easier and your life starts to transform, you will change and you will have no more time or interest in foolish thoughts and the things that they manifest. And now we will take a look at Lesson 3, Thinking Fourth Dimensionally. In this lesson, Neville emphasizes taking a few minutes every day to withdraw your attention from the outer world and to enter the inner world of imagination, whatever it is you want to be and or whatever it is you want, to faithfully contemplate these things. How would it feel to already be, to already have these things? And playing an imagination and sensing the reality as though you already are what you want to be and you already have what you want. Neville says, I close the door. What door? The door to my senses. I simply shut out completely all that my senses reveal. I deny the evidence of my senses. I suspend the limited reason of the natural man and walk in this bold assertion that I am what my senses deny, with the door of my senses closed. What do I take into that disciplined state? I take no one into that state, but the parents of the child and my disciples. I close the door against the mocking, laughing crowd. I no longer look for confirmation. I completely deny the evidence of my senses, which mock my assumption, and do not discuss with others whether my assumption is possible or not. You are already what you want to be, and you already have whatever it is you want, and you already are where you want to be. And as time goes on, even if what you call reality continues to mock what you felt the reality of in your imagination, it does not matter, continue to persist. For when you are what you want to be and you have what you want, it will be worth it. And in time, as you master this imaginal arts, time and space will even be obliterated. Some people may find it hard to keep faith for an assumption when they continue to see the opposite. But Neville says this, Take my challenge and put this philosophy to the test. If it does not work, you should not use it as a comforter. If it is not true, you must completely discard it. But I know it is true, and you will not know it until you try either to prove it or to disprove it. And now we look at Lesson 4, No One to Change But Self. Neville says, We become what we contemplate, for it is the nature of love as it is the nature of hate to change us into the likeness of that which we contemplate. So what Neville is teaching here, as you go about your day, be mindful what you give your attention to, what you allow yourself to feel, even though we may see things we don't like, and it may make us feel things that are not nice or even blame or condemn. It is all only a mirror. Don't fool yourself with the mirror of life. Because as Neville says, consciousness is the one and only reality we are incapable of seeing other than the contents of our own consciousness. Therefore, hate destroys us in the hour of victory and condemns us to be which we condemn. 
All conquest results in an exchange of characteristics, so that conquerors become like the conquered foe. We hate others for the evil which is in ourselves. Races, nations, and intimate groups have lived for centuries in intimate hostility, and it is the nature of hatred, as it is in the nature of love, to change us into the likeness of that which we contemplate. So be careful what you feel. If it's not lovely, revise it. Because if you're hating on something, condemning something, you're bringing the energy alive in yourself. And don't be surprised at some point if you find yourself playing the very role you once condemned. It's simply how consciousness works. You and I contemplate an idea and become it by falling in love with it. On the other hand, we can contemplate something we heartily dislike and by condemning it, we will become it. But because of the slowness and time in this three-dimensional world, when we do become what we contemplated, we have forgotten that formerly we set out to worship or to destroy it. When you learn these spiritual laws, it makes it very hard to blame anything on the outside. And in turn, you must turn to your only consciousness, your imagination, as the only reality, the only foundation of which all phenomena can be explained. And as you come to understand this by experience, you will know that public opinion does not matter, for men only tell you what you are. The behavior of men constantly tell us what we have conceived ourselves to be. Neville also points out in this lesson, sometimes people feel they have lost something, and that maybe it is lost for good. But Neville teaches these things that had been once real never cease to be. They never become unreal with the passage of time. Simply you descended in consciousness to a lower level where these things were out of sight. And all you need to do is ascend to the level where these things are eternal and once more can objectify into your reality, be it with health, wealth, or your standing in community, or your faith, whatever it may be. It's just simply a descent or an ascension in consciousness. And how do you ascend? By feeling. How would it feel if your wish was fulfilled? Live in that feeling. So as a reminder, it is not in blaming or trying to make another change. But when we ascend, by feeling of the wish fulfilled, as you do that, the world will melt magically before your eyes and reshape itself in harmony with that which your transformation affirms. As Neville says, we fashion the world that surrounds us by the intensity of our imagination and feelings. Neville says, instead of changing things, I would suggest to all to identify themselves with the ideal they contemplate. What would the feeling be like were you two pure eyes to behold iniquity? If to you all things were pure, and you without condemnation, contemplate the ideal state and identify yourself with it, and you will ascend to the sphere where you as Christ have your natural life. You are still in that state where you were before the world was. The only thing that has fallen is your concept of self. You see the broken parts, which really are not broken. You are seeing them through distorted eyes, as though you were in one of those peculiar amusement galleries where a man walks before a mirror and he is elongated, yet he is the same man. Or he looks into another mirror and he is all big and fat. These things are seen today because man is what he is, toy with the idea of perfection. And the best time to start is when you have a desire. What do you want? So the moment you want something, assume that you already have it, and remain there until it catches the tones of reality just like when you daydream or fantasize and you lose yourself. And finally, Lesson 5. Remain faithful to your idea. Neville says, You are Jesus, and your mother is your own consciousness. Her consciousness is the cause of all. Therefore, it is the great father-mother of all phenomena. So in essence, Neville is saying, Me, Lila. I am the child of my own consciousness, created by my consciousness. For as Neville says, consciousness is the only and one reality. There is no one to whom we can turn after we discover that our own awareness is God. For God is the cause of all, and there is nothing but God. You cannot say that a devil causes some things and God others. Listen to these words. If I am hurt, I am self-hurt. If there is darkness in my world, I created the darkness and the gloom and the depression. If there is light and joy, I created the light and the joy. There is no one but this I amness that does it. The only acceptable gift is a joyful heart. Come with singing and praise. 
That is the way to come before the Lord, your own consciousness. Assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, and you have brought the only acceptable gift. All states of mind other than that of the wish fulfilled are an abomination. They are superstition and mean nothing. When you come before me, rejoice, because rejoicing implies that something has happened which you desired. Come before me singing, giving praise, and giving thanks. For these states of mind imply acceptance of the state sought. Put yourself in the proper mood, and your own consciousness will embody it. Neville simply describes prayer as the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And if you ask, what do you mean by that? Neville would say, I would feel myself into the situation of the answered prayer, and then I would live and act upon that conviction. I would try to sustain it without effort, that is. I would live and act as though it were already a fact, knowing that as I walk in this fixed state, my assumption will harden into fact. Sometimes it could be as simple as when Neville wanted to go back to Barbados, he would walk down the streets of New York City and for a moment catch joyfully an imagination, imagining that the streets are lined with coconut trees and he could smell the familiar breeze of Barbados. And in the midst of your day, you can also have these little moments and play with your imagination with joy. Simply being reminded of this will help you incorporate it in your life until it becomes a habit. And you can re-listen to this as many times as you take until it catches. And you too will know by your own experiences as Neville and other great mystics have. Once you know all this, it simply comes down to practice, discipline, to learn to control the movements of your attention and imagination, the fourth dimension, to create whatever circumstances you want, and reality, the third dimension. So you learn to have these effortless, joyous, little waking dreams. But Neville in his humanness says, However, my own many failures would convict me were I to imply that I have completely mastered the movements of my attention, but I can, with the ancient teachers say, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press forward, I press towards the mark for the prize. Philippians 3, 13, 14 So it just goes to show you, don't worry, As you learn to master the imaginal arts, if you feel you've had any failures, continue to go on. Even such a great teacher as Neville, who manifested so much and taught so many students to successfully manifest, and even today, with all the years that have passed, many still are inspired and find their own successes with these teachings. So it doesn't matter if you're not a master yet. Continue to use these spiritual laws to cushion yourself and your loved ones, and to teach them to do the same if they're interested. Simply assume that it is done, and suspend reason. Suspend all the arguments of the conscious, three-dimensional mind. Your desire is outside of the reach of the three-dimensional mind. Assume you are that which you wish to be. Walk as though you were it. And as you remain faithful to your assumption, it will harden into fact. And this is a reminder. Simply allow it. Let it be easy and joyful. Now is the time. It is done. And this concludes my commentary on Neville's Five Lessons, The Fundamentals. Please do check out the links in the info section beneath this video. Thank you 